welcome to the homestead. Today I want to talk to you about slab wood. What we decided to do for this winter, uh, because it's really only our second winter here, uh, we decided to go ahead and get some slab wood from a local uh, uh, wood mill not that far from here. Where we live, there's lots of wood mills, uh, lots of people turning out wood, uh, oak, all kinds of woods. This area has primarily um, got a lot of oak in it. And so uh, there's a lot, lot of mills all around and there's even a charcoal plant down the road a little ways. And so they take all this wood, this oak, and they turn it into all kinds of products and they sell it on the market. And so wood is plentiful, especially slab wood that you see behind me. And we get our slab wood from a local mill and it costs about $20 a ton. So you gotta go pick it up yourself. You get a 16 foot trailer, they'll load it on the trailer for you. And it's a ton, it weighs about a ton of wood, and 2,000 pounds, and it's 20 bucks. Not a bad price. I've seen it, uh, people online talk about how their slab wood is a lot more expensive than that. So we're in a pretty good area where we can get slab wood. Um, so there's a lot of people out there who say, you know, slab wood is good. A lot of people who say slab wood is bad. And, uh, you know, it's just, it's, you know, what's, what's really the story on it? So far we've been burning it. It's January. It's a mild day today. And uh, we've been burning it now for most of the winter. And we're cutting some more of it. Uh, we had about nine tons delivered uh, to the homestead. Uh, basically, we, we went with our pickup truck and got a 16-foot trailer and went and picked up nine loads, so nine tons uh, of slab wood. And um, really, I have no complaints so far. Uh, people had had told me that online that it would burn too hot and uh, uh, you got to really watch it and it puts out a lot of creosote. So far, that hasn't been the case. Um, I guess the key to this is that you have to have a damper on your stove. You need a wood stove, a good wood stove that has a damper, a good airtight stove that you can close off the oxygen inside your stove. So really, at night, I can take the slab wood, stack it up, and uh, close off the damper, and it'll burn all night long. And by the time I get up in the morning, there's still hot coals ready to go inside of that wood stove that all I need to do is put a couple new pieces on it, uh, open up the damper, and it, it fires right up. And so uh, it, this will last all night long. Now with slab wood, um, the breakdown of the type of wood you get is really going to be about th three types, um, with the majority being one type. But you're going to get some kindling, you're going to get some wood like this, some real small stuff um, from these mills. Uh, you may get some stuff that's a little bit bigger. I would say about a quarter of, of the wood you get in a bundle is going to be about like this size, kindling. Okay, And then uh, about another quarter of, of the material you're going to get is going to be big stuff like this. Good, nice sized blocks that would be great for an overnight piece of wood that you can throw in your stove, close off the damper. And this will be here in the morning still. Uh, so it's a good chunk of wood. Uh, so you get a lot of this too. About, about a quarter of the pile is made of this stuff. And then about half of the stuff, half of the slab wood you're going to get is going to be just medium sized. You know, stuff about like this, uh, maybe a little bigger, maybe a little smaller, but uh, just medium sized slabs that you get. And so, uh, you know, it's a good breakdown. I think it's worked out well for us. We have a good amount of kindling. I don't have to cut kindling this year because there's plenty of this stuff in the pile. And I don't have to break off big wood chunks, you know, for overnight logs because there's good, good sized pieces, you know, like the one I just showed you right here in the pile. So um, I think uh, overall uh, it's been really, really good, uh, the breakdown of the kind of wood you're getting for, for being able to use in your stove. So I want to explain our strategy for you going into this winter. Uh, last winter was our first winter here. And so when we got here, we basically went out for the first winter and downed uh, whatever dead trees that we had. We were really busy the first year here, and so we didn't have a lot of time to prepare for this winter. And so we, we, were, we had just gotten really on the homestead, got, got in the land, we're you know, getting into the houses and getting ready for that winter, was base, which was basically upon us at the time we moved here. And so we went through and got a lot of deadwood that we found, cut up, spent all of our time cutting up deadwood. Uh, that we found in the forest and trees that were already down or trees that needed to come down that were already dead and chopping them up and getting them uh, in, into, the, uh, into the houses uh, stacked up or, or underneath the houses stacked up and ready for burn. Uh, and then we went into town, we bought a few ricks here and there. A rick of wood is I think uh, four by four by eight. Um, uh, so it's a, it's a good sized stack of wood. And uh, so we bought a few of those. They're around 40 bucks, $35 each. And so each, each rick will fill up the back of a pickup truck. And so uh, we spent some money on that. This time we did it a lot cheaper by buying this stuff in bulk, you know, by, you know, nine tons of it, $20 a load, gave us a lot more wood, 
plenty of wood for things like you know outdoor burning like canning we're going to be doing some outdoor canning of some beans soon and we do we do we fire up the brick oven a lot and we use oak for that and so that works really well and so this year what we're what we're, we have been doing is i've been taking down live trees uh that will be uh seasoned over the course of the spring summer and fall for next winter and so now is a time that i don't have to buy this anymore our mace because it was so easy we may buy a few bundles next year but I, we're going to start using our own wood we're, we've started to select trees that we want to have come down uh, for different reasons and uh, use those trees for next winter so that we can be able to harvest and start a cycle of harvesting our own wood that we're going to burn on the land so anyway that's our strategy that we're using here for the slab wood uh, people talk a lot about slab wood and is it is it uh, worth the effort and the time you know if you have a, a saw buck like you saw in our videos yeah absolutely it's worth the time it makes it work very easy and a couple people can do if you spend about 20 30 minutes on it a day uh, it'll be done before you know it and we've gone through about nine tons uh, of this stuff and we're almost done with it and uh, it's just spending a little bit on it each day we've had plenty of wood we gotta have plenty of wood left over for the spring and for the summer that we can use for the brickwood oven and for canning and for you know the outdoor canning because we can all of our canning over an open fire and so we're gonna have a lot of extra wood that we can use so anyway, slab wood. Is it good? Bad? I think it's good. I think it's worked out well for us. I think the key to burning inside of a stove is having a good stove that you can close the damper on. All right, we're going to leave it at that. We'll see you next time on the homestead. If you enjoyed this video, please click the thumbs up button below the video. It really makes creating these videos worthwhile. If you want to make sure to never miss a new video, be sure to click the subscribe button. Now you can get your homesteading questions answered. Visit us at our contact page on anamericanhomestead.com and send us your questions. Maybe we'll pick your question for a future video or article on our website.